Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. Uh, this program is a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, today we have a very special guest, and one of the showcases is a woman owner business success story. And our topic is experiencing the wonderful benefits of Eastern medicine. I'd like to welcome uh, Su Yen Mack from West Oahu Acupuncture and Integrative uh, Medicine. Good morning. How are you, Su Yen? Good, good. Thank you for having me, Dennis. Great to be here. Thank you, and I'm happy and um, happy that when I asked you, you, you agreed to become a guest because I think there's a lot of information that we can share on a topic that so many people have questions about acupuncture. Yes, and definitely. but you know there's a lot to learn and even things that you've told me about and I've just discovered and I've been actually going to an acupuncturist myself for two years. That's wonderful. But before starting, why don't we go back to the beginning and if you can tell. Uh, everyone, uh, what a person has to do to become an acupuncturist and what type of educational background and clinical training is required? Sure, yes. So there is actually a lot of training involved. Um, it's a master's program ranging from three to three and a half years to five years. And so you need some kind of bachelor's degree beforehand to even apply for that. So I myself went to Boston University, majored in psychology and minored in business. And then afterwards, I went to the New England School of Acupuncture. And that involved 3,000 hours of academic and clinical training. Um, in those 3,000 hours, there were 925 hours of clinical <laughs> patient care, yes, in the school clinic and in local hospitals. So a lot of training and time and energy involved in becoming an acupuncturist. That's a lot of commitment. That, that is, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's a labor of love. <laughs> Well, obviously, you're very passionate in what you're doing and helping people. And but I'm kind of curious, you know, what type of certifications do you have, and uh, can you tell us the type of forms of treatments that you uh, employ in your practice? Yes, yes. So I'm a diplomate of Oriental medicine, certified by the NCCOM. I practice utilizing a combination of Master Tang style, Tan style, and traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. So we, at the clinic, we do acupuncture, we do cupping, we do botanical medicine, herbal medicine, and we have an herbal foothill room. So we utilize everything in our toolbox to really help the patient get to optimal, optimal care, optimal health. I see. And, you know, you, you talk about Eastern medicine, integrative medicine, alternative medicine. I mean, mm -hmm. what is this difference between the three and how they benefit uh, people or your patients and how they correlate together? Sure. So alternative medicine is basically anything kind of outside the realm of traditional Western medicine. And then integrative medicine, everything that kind of works with that. Eastern medicine is its own mm -hmm. kind of sphere from China, of course. And I think there's a lot of benefits that people can um, get from it. So we see people with back pain, um, you know, anything that's acute or chronic. So back pain is number one, neck pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, patients come in. And then we have a lot of patients with internal issues that uh, are helped as well. So anything from anxiety, depression, insomnia, um, high blood pressure, diabetes, we can help with any digestive issues, acid reflux, gas, bloating, uh, constipation, a woman's issues is uh, really up there as well, um, from PMS pain to fibroids, and uh, fertility is huge. We can help, um, you know, the success of IVF studies have shown up to 40%, mm -hmm. so that, that's a huge one. And, of course, men's health as well can benefit. That sounds like everybody can use yes, it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, when did... Eastern medicine first come on the scene in the United States when Western cultures and you know when did it first gain its popularity and how did you know when did it start integrating with Western mm -hmm. medicine? So 
So my uh, alma mater, New England School of Acupuncture, was the first and oldest school. So they opened in 1979. So I would say in the 80s, it really started getting bigger. People were recognizing that it was a viable technique. I say maybe in the last decade or so, you've, you've seen really big growth in areas where insurance is getting, you know, covering it more under the benefits as well. So I would say uh, it's, it's getting there. Not every plan is covering it at the moment, but I'm seeing more and more. And definitely you're seeing it uh, with the veterans as well. The VA Choice Program covers acupuncture, so that's a, a great sign. Well, you are partially educated in London too, weren't you? Um, not, not necessarily, yeah. I see. Your training came more in the Boston yes, area. Yes, yes. Clinical yes. And centers and hospitals. Yes, yes. I see. And so um, with these, when you see patients or when they come to you or they inquire, what are some of the common questions do patients have? Sure. So they usually ask me what acupuncture is. And basically the theory is that we have these channels and meridians in our bodies related to the different organs. And illness and pain come from blockages in these channels. And acupuncture works to unblock those blockages. Um, the other question that I get a lot is how often do I need to come in? Mm -hmm. So in China, they actually do courses every day for 10 days, and then you take a couple of days off, and then you do another course of 10 days. So depending on how severe the problem is and how chronic it is, we usually like to see the patients starting twice a week for, say, a month, and then reevaluate at the end of the month. And then we, when we get to the level of care that we want, then it becomes maintenance. And then that could be either you know, every other week or once a month at that point. So in the beginning, the, um, you know, it takes a little time. It's cumulative. Yes, it works because... cumulatively, exactly. So the more you do in the beginning, the faster and the stronger the results. I see. Yeah. So that as far as um, in acupuncture, too, I noticed that, oh, I've heard, and I've experienced it myself, actually, that there's different type of needles or pins, you know, different sizes. Yes, and, yes, definitely. Uh, thicknesses. Can you yes. tell, yes. tell us about that and how does it work? Sure. So the different sizes depends on basically what you want to treat and the area you want to treat. So if it's a point on the hand, you're not going to use something very big. So you're going to use like half an inch needle for that. Uh, also, depending on what you want to treat, so if it's a skin issue, you're going to just treat superficially. If it's a bone issue, you actually want to get to the bone um, area, so you're going to need a, a thicker and longer needle to get to that. Mm -hmm. yep. But you also treat all different parts of the body, too. You mentioned yes. about, you know, if you have treatments in the head or the skull and, uh, versus even down to your feet. Yes, and, yeah. You know, what is the difference is when you do head treatment? So I've been heard it's great on if you have colds or sinuses or yep. different areas. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about sure. that? Sure. So, I mean, theoretically, you can treat any part of the body on anywhere of the body. So if someone comes in with shoulder pain, I would actually treat the opposite side. Oh, Me, opposite yes, side. opposite side. Yeah, I know. It's a little counterintuitive, but... It balances out the body and Eastern medicine. That's is, what you is, mean about balance. Yes, then. yes. Yep, it's all about balance. Yeah, so, you know, uh, great for colds, um, just boosting your immune system. You can do cupping on the upper back if you have a cold, and that'll help, help relieve the cold as well. I There's see. Lots of options. What about when you uh, put pins in the cranium or the, you know, I guess it's all in all. What is yes, that? Yes, yes. So that helps with neuro neurological issues, so say stroke victims can be helped with scalp acupuncture. Yeah. So it's not only physical too, but it's also neurologically Yes, yes, effective, yes. Then, huh? It can affect on you know, so many different levels, on physical level, neurological, emotional as well. I yeah. see. So, you know, in doing your business practice and all that, um, you know, what made you decide, you know, from the business end to, to um, start your business? And, you know, where are you located? Tell us about that. And why did you choose the EVA area? Okay. 
So I'm located um, in Ever Beach at the Laulani Shopping Center. And, you know, when I first opened, I wanted to find a growing community that was really lacking in um, alternative care. So uh, I think Ever Beach is one of those areas where you're not, you don't have a lot of choices in that. So I think I made a really good decision because it's it's been really great. We've been open for only a month and a half, and it's been a very warm welcome. Everybody's really excited to have someone on the west side um, that they can go to. Yeah. Well, how does your practice, uh, you know, acupuncture, Eastern medicine, how does it uh, integrate or work with other um, type of um, practices like, say, orthopedics, chiropractic, mm -hmm. uh, physical therapy. Sure. Can you yes. tell, me, tell us about yes. that? Yes. So it's a very harmonious relationship. We, you know, we love referring to each other because each brings a different aspect to the table, a different benefit to the patient. So I am actually right next to a chiropractor, and mm -hmm. we refer to each other all the time. And the patients benefit from going to both chiropractor and acupuncture. So yeah, it's a great relationship. Yep. Now, is there any anyone as far as age groups that are more likely to see you or how does it apply from you know, whether from a youth or to an you know an elderly person? Mm -hmm. So we see a whole range of people from you know, I've treated children before to very, very elderly, but I would say um, most common common demographic we're seeing is maybe older women and uh, people who are a little older who have aches and pains that they've tried Western medicine and, want, and it didn't really work the way they you know, they wanted. There's a lot of side effects, so they want to try something more natural, and then they come in and we help them. I see. Yes. Well, the um, when you. Think about the treatment and all that. Is it? You mentioned that it helps your resistance. You know, it, it, it's uh, preventative to illnesses. Mm -hmm. And even, um, how does it work towards um, as an alternative before surgery or pain problems or mm -hmm. you know, uh, how does that come into play? So I, I would really strongly recommend everyone consider trying acupuncture before a surgery because I have been able to help a number of people not need surgery. So I had a patient come in with spinal stenosis and was told that they needed surgery. We did back-to-back you know, -back treatments. Within two to three months, she was in almost pain-free to the point where her doctor said, okay, you don't need surgery anymore. Same thing with, I uh, had a shoulder pain patient, said that they needed surgery. He came in for a few sessions and pain resolved, and so no longer needed surgery. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. coincidental that you mentioned that because I, you know, I have spinal stenosis okay. and I've had major surgery myself mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had uh, uh, a disc problems that had to be replaced and yes. had to go and do that surgery. But yeah. You know, to the acupuncturist I had seen before I met you, and this is, you know, about two years ago. Yeah. And even to my uh, massage therapist, they both told me, gee, I wish I, you know, uh, that you saw me or talked to me right. about this before right. that. Right, yeah, you yeah. You know, because at least it would have given an alternative um, opportunity. Yes. To yes. resolve a certain problem. Yes, huh? yes, yes. We can either try to prevent that, or if, even if the surgery is necessary, we can help with recovery so that it's faster and not as debilitating. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Sure. And then um, I do have more questions to ask okay. when we come back yes, to our program. Yes, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, okay. live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha.
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Thank you, Thuyen, for the information that you've given us so far. But I want to go into the deeper aspects as far as now and, um, you know, the, uh, as far as the insurance involved, and, you know, what's, you know, um, is there insurance available to patients? And can you uh, go into that area? So we've seen more and more um, every year, which, which is great. So it really depends on your employer if it's added as a benefit. Um, I also know that some Medicare plans actually cover acupuncture, which is great. Um, and then we have also the VA Choice Program, which is available for veterans, and they, they cover acupuncture as well. So, well you, you mentioned since opening about a month ago, yes. and you're beginning to have veterans call you and yes. all that. Yeah. So how is that linked? How are you getting referrals, or how are they coming to see you or getting to know you? Yep, so a lot of it, it has been word of mouth um, since we're, we're still new. So people who kind of walk by or do a search for acupuncture uh, come see me. So all, anyone who is a veteran can uh, get acupuncture. All they need to do is call the VA Choice and tell them who they want to see, and then they'll set up the appointment for them. So very simple. Yeah. And you, I, also, I want to ask you, too, you told me about your foot soap. Yes. And uh, yeah, I didn't know about you know, I've heard very little bit about it, but you know, I, uh, could you tell me more? Sure. So we have a foot soap room that, um, you know, it's an herbal formula. Instead of taking it internally, it's actually absorbed through the feet. So ideally for anyone with a Chinese um, diagnosis of either chi or blood stagnation, so it helps with circulation issues. So any type of pain, um, especially feet, but anywhere in the body, it could be back pain shoulder pain, it helps with tension headaches, mm -hmm. uh, migraines, um, high blood pressure it helps with, and digestive issues, even fertility it helps with. So the analogy is as we get older, it's the, the skin cells are kind of like a snow globe. Everything kind of settles in the bottom. And what the foot soak does is kind of shakes it up and ah. gets things moving again. Yeah, uh -huh. so it's, it's really good, you know, therapeutically, and it's, just a relaxing experience as well. So you're sitting with a warm herbal foot soak, and then the chair has a heat and vibrate um, option as well. So it's kind of like a mini spa experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, then you've invited me, and I am going to try yes, it. Yes, definitely. Come in. Yes. What about the, as far as um, herbal you know, uh, uh, drinks or? supplements that you can uh, take. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. So um, we have herbal formulas for almost anything and everything. I would say top would be for pain. We have herbal medicine that can uh, specifically target uh, areas. So if you have neck pain, there are herbs that can um, help with pain and inflammation that go directly to the neck or the back or the knees, what have you. And then any other internal issues we, we can help with. Digestion is really, really top up there. Um, stress and anxiety, there's an herbal formula that's really helpful called Shao Yao San. You can either take it in tea form or pill form as well. So lots of options. We also provide CBD um, oil for patients who, who want to try that as, as well. Um, where do you see your business going? In the future, you mentioned also adding a massage therapist, or what are some of your plans and goals? Yes, so the, we've been open for about a month and a half, and the herbal foot soap room was uh, the second phase, so we added that about two to three weeks ago. And then go, going forward, we're looking to add maybe a massage therapist in the next month or two, just to give people the options 
know, providing a one-stop shop for everything that they might need. I see. Yeah. And so, um, where do you see the role of Eastern medicine now as far as, I know we touched briefly about that, but going further in the future, you know, as far as what type of influence it'll have and how um, big it'll become. Yeah, I think it's, it's growing and I think it's going just to be more integrative, um, integrated into Western medicine as, as time goes on. I think people want more choices in their healthcare, choices that are more natural, that don't have side effects, and are effective. So mm -hmm. I think I think it's going to grow a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. Um, what about as um, part of the segment who is a woman in business mm -hmm. and your success story, and um, what were the challenges that you had in starting up a business, and how did you um, get assistance through um, walking from the process from wanting to start your business in Hawaii and opening it? So it was, it was um, always, you know, our dream to, to open a practice in, in paradise. And I'm, I'm happy to say that we were successful, mm -hmm. uh, definitely with the help of SBA and SBDC. They were really instrumental, especially in the beginning, to just kind of maneuver everything that's, that's here in the state. Um, I, I signed up with SBA and SBDC and got an advisor, and luckily we were paired up, and you've been my business guardian angel since then. <laughs> that's, it's been a great experience. Um, you've been great to work with, Oh, by thank the way. you, thank you. Um, so just anywhere from finding a space uh, negotiating the lease because it's it's a big process. Just there's so many aspects to it. Um, working through loans if necessary, finding um, the right insurance, finding some legal representation. Like there's just so many moving parts when you're an entrepreneur. That having you by my side was was such a great help to be a soundboard to bounce ideas off of someone with. So much experience in the Thank industry you. and on the island, you know, was was great. That's yeah. Wonderful. And um, now I understand that you're even going out into the community and to networking events, meeting other professionals, yes. and kind of like um, supporting other business people and integrating together with them. Can you tell yes. me some of your experiences and what have you? Uh, uh, you know, benefit from. Sure. So I am part of the COA chapter of the BNI, which has been really great. So many great entrepreneurs, um, solopreneurs in there, um, just make networking and meeting people, helping each other out with referrals has been great. Um, I met a local yoga instructor. We're thinking of maybe incorporating, collaborating, doing an acupuncture and yoga class together, which is very um, unique and different. So that's in the works. Um, I'm also going to be talking to the Kapolei Village Senior Center uh, Club on, on Thursday, I think May 2nd, mm -hmm. to just let them know about all the benefits of Eastern medicine. So just little, you know, just going out to the community, a lot of educating, a lot of meeting people and you know, telling them how great Eastern medicine is. Mm. So uh, with other people, they, I, I'm often going to a different, um, uh, to the University of Hawaii or the community colleges systems, and you have a lot of people with big interest in starting their own business. And um, I've visited centers like culinary or fashion apparel or uh, it's um, uh, people have a desire to open and start the business. Yes. So, and as a business consultant and a retired banker too, you know, I've been privileged to meet a lot of people, and I'm a firm believer in the benefits of small business or locally owned, closely held business. Wait, is there any advice that you can give people when you first look into business? I know you talk about support programs that help you and all, but essentially you are not alone. So you sought help. 
and looking at different avenues of getting assistance. Mm -hmm. Do you have any parting shots or anything that you can tell people? I think, you know, if you have a passion to do what you want to do, stick with it. Keep going. It's, it's hard work. It's definitely hard work, but the, the end result is so worth it. Just, you know, doing what you love, being your own boss. Like, don't, don't give up. Just keep, keep fighting and you'll get there. Like, my personal motto is keep going till you can't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of got me through grad school. Um, but yeah, you know, everybody has a passion and it's great. You know, just being who you are, and uh, yeah, there's just so much freedom in being your own boss. It's just wonderful. Well, when did you first realize you wanted to start your own business? And you know, what was your? How did you get the interest into becoming an acupuncture? Oh, well, I after acupuncture school, it it kind of goes hand in hand with um, being an acupuncture. So you kind of have to start your own business, and I've always wanted to do that anyways. I wasn't really comfortable working for someone else, just being very independent myself. So I always, I always knew that that was the path for me. At a very yeah. uh, youthful age? Um, probably a little. I mean, I, I worked at, in a corporation in my 20s, and from that experience, I knew that wasn't what I wanted. So from kind of, I guess, trial and error, Knowing what doesn't work for you, then you know what does work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So getting into acupuncture, it was um, kind of I was at a kind of crossroads in my life. Do I continue with uh, my past career that I wasn't I knew I wasn't happy with, or do I make a, a definitely big change in my life? And I'm so glad I did. I went to the open house. I had a friend who had just graduated, and I went to her for a few sessions. Really loved the experience at the open house. I just it just felt right, like I was supposed to be there. And you now I signed up that day. Three and a half years later, I was an acupuncturist, and it was the best decision of my life. I, <laughs> you know, I love what I do. I get to help people and make a living. I don't really foresee myself ever retiring, really, because it doesn't really feel like a job. It's just enjoying what I do. That's okay. wonderful. Yeah. Actually, that's why I'm in the place where I'm at because I've been four decades of working with um, business owners, people mm. who started up their business, yes. expanded, acquired, or even sold. And I've worked in all different types of industries. And to this day, it's always so fresh to me. Yeah. Feeling, and, you know, I, I think business is alive and it's so necessary. Yes. And um, it, it gives forth creativity, yeah. yes. you know, independence, and, you know, it really stretches you to do more. And a lot of times it's people's calling and purpose. I yes. see that. And yes. I've seen people just from very um, youthful age wanting to be self-employed, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they look at areas of what businesses should I start, creativity creativity and all that. And um, I think by having guests like yourself and sharing your experiences, I think it you know, can help other people. That's great. I, I'm happy to do so, yes. Follow your passion, follow your path, what you're meant to do, and you know, just being happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. creates a better community and society. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's kind of neat working with other business people, too, that own their own business, and you can share stories, and you kind of can help each other and work together. Yes, definitely, yeah. Definitely hurdles. I mean, it's, it's not easy, but, you know, benefits outweigh the hardship 100 times. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's been a privilege having you today, and being a guest and sharing your experiences. And thank you very much for joining me and I appreciate all that you've done to uh, share your experiences on this program. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Dennis. It was great to be here. Thank you, Thuyen. Yes. Much success to you. Thank you.